So welcome back friends to the homestead. So I have a problem and I need your help. I'm hoping to to harness the collective brain power of my subscriber base to come up with a good solution to something that has happened. So last year, here we are in the orchard, but this is the nine foot deer and elk fence that we have. Last year, a big dug fir branch in a windstorm blew off, hit these wires and snapped one of the corner, the king posts, one of the corner posts that is the main strength for the whole fence. Now, it's broken off here at, the, at, this, uh, at this joint and, and all of the top wires now are sagging and it looks bad. So yet there's one option is to replace the whole thing, but the whole post is in concrete. Um, both of the, both sides of the fence are, are pulling against it and would have to be stretched and it's, it, it's a pretty big, pro, pro, a pretty big project. What I'm hoping to figure out if, is what, how can we, uh, because this is not cracked all the way through, it's still got quite a bit of wood to it. How could we support this in a way that would look decent um, and pull this back where it would still be strong without having to undo the whole fence and redo everything? Couple ideas, one idea my dad had was maybe put a piece of angle iron, like two inch heavy angle iron on the back and bolt it through and then take a, a winch and pull it back. But let me, let me hear your ideas, if you have any good ideas of ran into this before, of a way that we could straighten this up and still have, because the only thing it needs to hold are these wires on the top. The, the bottom portion of it, that's what's holding up all of this, this woven wire. So that's okay, that, that didn't, wasn't affected. It's this is the main thing. So put in the comments uh, how we ought to do that. And, and if I choose your idea, I'll send you a prize. Um, I also wondered while I was down here, we haven't revisited the bat cave or the bat house uh, and we'll see if anything's going on in there. This is the very first habitat snag uh, that we built out here. Uh, some of you who follow the channel for a long time will remember this. Uh, this is, I, I built several of these uh, for, to invite uh, different birds and different things to come and to nest in. And one of the things that we did was, uh, was a bat house. You can see the bat house is <laughs> gonna focus. The bat house has been up there. And I don't think that we have any bats in there. Uh, but the thing that I'm most interested in is the birdhouse. So I did see some birds down here the other day that were looking around. Let's see uh, if anyone's nesting inside. I've built several of these habitat snags around the, the property and I always put a, uh, a, bird, a birdhouse door in there. <laughs> so they, uh, well look at that. I haven't, I haven't looked in here for years, but someone's been in there. Uh, it's been some time, but it's full of uh, down and feathers. So someone, some, there's a bunch of feathers there. Yeah, some little bird has been in there, uh, but these are kind of fun. So you just, I just take my chainsaw and, and just cut out uh, kind of a little hole right there. You put a, make sure you put a slant on there so any rainwater that gets in it fall, goes out so they can stay dry. And then save the bark and you put a little door on there and then a little, just make a little, little latch there. Now that needs tightened up, it's all falling apart, but you get the idea. But that's kind of a fun little project you can do. So just to wrap up here, a habitat snag, if you don't know, is uh, something that is really vital to the to your your timber stand uh, to keep it healthy. So what I'll do is um, about every acre or so, uh, I'll make one of these, and I'll usually start with a green tree, you know, something where we're thinning, maybe it's got a broken top or something, and I'll go ahead and I'll climb it and I'll top it, uh, leaving a big branch or something. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to leave branches and such uh, for birds and raptors to hang on to. But what uh, foresters are finding is that these attract um, hundreds of different species and varieties of bugs and birds and to fill, facilitate uh, the breakdown of these uh, habitat snags I'll go in and I've you can see that I've cut a series of notches so I'll take a drill and I'll bore holes in them I've taken the chainsaw here you can see and I've made a lot of slash cuts uh, just lots of diff different cubbies and holes I'll put a couple birds nests in them and you can even you know hang a bat house on there which I haven't had any luck with yet but I'm always hoping that they'll find it someday and stop living in my barn in my house uh, but that's kind of the principle of a habitat snag. So this was a green tree when we started uh, and I'm guessing that we probably did this either four or five years ago. If you look and see we can tell how quickly this broke down. Remember this was a green tree and already we've got the bark is all separating from it. This is a ponderosa pine uh, separating from it 
and it is indeed start to, starting to break down. There's lots of little holes and different things that I burrowed. I've seen woodpeckers down here. So the idea is, is, is that if you can provide something like this for all of the insects and beetles and birds and woodpeckers, it's an easy target for them. They'll come here and it, it kind of creates its own ecosystem and they'll, the, the hope is that they'll leave your big healthy trees alone. So I guess the best analogy that I could give you is those of you guys that have been around marine engines or outboard motors, and the outboard motor, when you're using an aluminum motor with aluminum lower unit and prop, electrolysis from the salt water, this stuff really wants to corrode that. So what they found is that, uh, I think it's, is it zinc? There's something, I forget, maybe it's zinc. Uh, the, there's a, an element that's actually, uh, that, the, that the corrosion likes a lot more than the aluminum, so you'll bolt those things onto the side, and then all of that stuff will attack those and leave your engine alone. So that's always kind of how I understood it, and kind of the best analogy for something like this. So if you have snags that are standing, one thing you want to be careful if you have kids around is make sure you top them. You don't want them being 85, 125 feet high because they could come down and they could fall on someone. These here, I pretty much cut them off at about 25 or 30 feet. That way, chances are, if it does come down, you know, it's less like, much less likely to hurt someone. So that's kind of, my, that's kind of my thought process on that. Good morning, everyone. It is a chilly day on the homestead, but a beautiful day. The snow level is going up, up, and up. If we look to the north there at Mount Fuji, I think the last time I checked two days ago, it was at about 4,000 feet. We have, we have a very uh, a big and ambitious, um, well, I'll have to wait. And uh, I guess it's going to be, uh, how would I explain it? A, uh, an adventure planned up there in that area. Uh, but we're kind of waiting for the snow level to uh, needs to be up about 5,000 feet or so. So another couple more weeks, but it's melting quickly. And um, I look forward to that. So we have a big day today uh, that uh, we have, of course, Stu from Tokyo uh, and his family is visiting. We got to meet them last night and uh, had a good time. And we have uh, plans to go down and plant our, uh, our nut orchard uh, down. We're going to be working on a little food forest. Uh, so we'll take the equipment down there and uh, Stu and his family, they're going to help out. So you'll get to meet them. Um, and first time he's been here in the States, he said in 30 years. So, uh, it's fun to have, uh, well, a little international flavor on the channel. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate the support. If you enjoy these homestead videos, please, uh, take a moment and click the thumbs up and comment. Uh, we always enjoy that and appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next video.